Today I'm going to be going over a way to align objects to a surface using logic bricks. So the reason you might want this is because let's say you have a car, and it's just one example, you can use this for a lot of other stuff. Let's say you have a car and you want it to align to the surface. What you can go ahead and do is use this technique, and if you were to use this, we can have a dynamic object which we can go up curves and turn around and stuff, and you'd say, why not just use a rigid body? Well, the problem with a rigid body is it will flip upside down if you go too high and fall on the ground. And using this technique, we can use rigid bodies as well, but it's never going to be upside down, and you're not going to have all those problems with it flipping around, going everywhere. This technique allows you to have a very smooth, nice looking effect where you dry up things. It might not be the best for everything, but it is really useful and it can be used for a lot of stuff. So let's get straight into it. So I'm going to be going over how we can align this object to the terrain, both in rotation and location. So what we're going to be wanting to do is we're going to want this to basically go up, follow the kind of the terrain. Um, and we also want it to rotate to the train, so if the train goes up on angle, the cube will rotate with that. So we can use this with whatever we want, static, dynamic, um, doesn't really matter. It's just going to align it to the train. Now, the reason we could not use the rigid body, because I mean, I guess that falls to the train, but that's a problem. It will fall, it will fall over backwards on top of itself. It's just not good, so we want dynamic is probably the best, and... It will work with rigid body, it's just and you don't want to use rigid body instead of this if you want your object to be aligned to the right terrain because it's actually going to align your object to the terrain. Um, now the logic bricks are very simple, all we need is an always and a constraint and we connect this up. And this is all the logic bricks we are actually going to need but we're going to have to change this constraint mode to distance constraint. And once we do that, you'll see we have a lot of settings here. And, and what do they all do? Uh, well, what we're going to want to go ahead and do is this logic brick is going to be sending down a ray and hitting the floor. And that's what we want to go ahead and do. So that's what we're doing. This logic brick, uh, yes, this actuator is actually doing. It's sending a ray down. And that's why we have to set up some racing. So as you can see, I just added a ray sensor here just to show you that as you can see range and range. You can both you can tell what all the settings are kind of the copy of each other. So it is using the ray kind of logic in it, but it's combined into this actuator. So what we want to go ahead and do is I'm duplicating these cubes because the reason is these cubes are a unit by unit. So there was two of those. So I'm going to set this to six. So each of those cubes has about two units in it so that's kind of the depth you want and I'm going to go minus z axis all right so there we go if we press play it's still not working so we need to press this per and this is basically going to have it always active even if the ray doesn't hit a target now if you don't do this I find it just doesn't work so you're going to need to have this enabled pretty much any time you're doing it so it's not working either so you just need to click this force distance and now what you see is we have this working and if you move this down as you can see so what's happening here is the object the, the origin is going to the center of where the ray hits and we don't want that so if we change this bottom one up it's basically going to offset it to the bottom since this is two units up um, the from the origin to the outside is about one unit so that's why we set it to that and you can see it's just sitting on top so if it was bigger you'd want to see that high and so on now if we enable damping what this is going to do is it is going to make it smoother it's not going to completely jump now you see this in if we click this what this is going to do is it's going to align our object's rotation to the terrain as you can see so there we go that's pretty much it we're going to change a bit of settings later as well but it's a bit weird there, so you might want to change this to sphere. And the reason for this, as you can see, we get a lot smoother result. Um, it really depends on what you're doing. I find that sphere works really well for if you make like some kind of car or something that has to cut the train. Works really well for something like that. So I'm just adding a keyboard thing here so we can see it move. So I'm going to set the Y to uh, oh, X to 0.1. And we also need to have something for it to move. 
So let's go ahead and scale this up. Uh, minus one. I'm just kind of want to see it moving. So yeah, uh, that should be good. So now you can see yeah, it, yeah, it is following the train, even though it is a dynamic, which is really useful. Uh, let me, so let's go ahead and just move this up so you can see a little bit better, which is really useful because uh, you can do this with Python pretty easily, but it's nice that you can do it with logic bricks as well, and this allows you to follow the train. So if you have some some kind of car. This will also work really well for that because you don't get your car flipping upside down or something. It kind of just goes to the train and goes flat and you can just use a dynamic one. So you're not tipping over and all that kind of stuff. I mean, if you really want to go advanced to cars, you'd have to use the Python uh, bullet car wrapper thing or whatever it's called, which is really advanced and hard to set up. So this is basically you can use this for car. You can use this for a lot of stuff, but... One quick thing I failed to mention is about this L here. So this enables local or global. So by default it's on global. So when we move around you can see our ray down there does not move. It always stays in the same place looking straight down where we set it. But if we go ahead and enable L, what's going to happen, as you can see, is when we rotate it around the ray is relative to wherever the the object is looking therefore you know it's local so it de really depends on what you're doing uh, both are quite useful as you can see it lines to whatever surface we want now maybe you don't want that you maybe only want it to line to some one kind of surface so the way you can do this add a property and call this floor all right floor and we can go ahead and paste this into the property slot and now that we have something uh, as you can see it's aligning to the main mesh um, and if we were to add something it oh, I shouldn't have deleted that plane anyway now you can see if it doesn't have that property it's not aligning to the object but as soon as it's not it will align to the object so if you want to align to everything just don't put anything in that property slot but it should work fine. So if you turn the stamping off, as you can see, it goes instantly. And if you want that, uh, you don't. You just want it instantly to go to the ground, but you don't want it to uh, rotate instantly. What you can do here is, if you increase that rotate damp, what this can allow us to do is just have a just a smoother thing where it turns. Or you can just use that main dampening to kind of give everything a bit more a smoother thing. Now there's time as well. If you want to use it it will just basically after 50 ticks or whatever you set it to it's just going to disable this so this can be useful if you're adding it in or something uh, but that's pretty much it so if you want to see more tutorials like this and tutorials on other other subjects you can subscribe and I come out with a new tutorial every week and if you want to see a way you can use this to make bullet holes only using up logic bricks so it's really useful uh, there's a few problems uh, tell me because I might make a tutorial on that because I did figure that out while I'm making this tutorial. So that could be quite useful. So have a great week. Keep blendering and make something cool. Goodbye.